So we see what the news is saying about certain artists, not saying any names. We understand what that is and how it looks. And we've known and had that perspective for a long time. Mm -hmm. Not just talk, not just conversation. We see evidence of what it was. And that's unfortunate where I was asked to perform there. So it was only right that I kind of been asked and kind of had a great time on the news channel and then i kind of went to roger's party and had a great time there so we was there solely just to have a great time with roger and i just kind of got on with the with the tv station just to kind of promote you're a woman and have a great time welcome to mamwa i'm gorda camp your host and this is the podcast that includes you into my most famous song lyrics he's a middle-aged man with an attitude and he didn't even have one till he met you That's right, I'm the middle-aged man and my attitude will chatter us through all things that I'm passionate about. From spirituality, the gym and fitness, food, travelling and music or movies. Quick disclaimer, this list is not exhaustive. So you can get on or you can get off and join us for the episodes that you like the sounds of. Dip in or dip out, as long as you keep dipping. Either way, we've got something to say and we're going in 3, 2, 1. One musician, but so many skills, from instruments to improving other people's positivity and increasing the love around the world. Welcome back to the Mamwa podcast. I'm Gordy Camp, and we're going all in today to chat about music and using music for good in the world with Kenny J. Wilkins. Welcome, Kenny. Great to see you. Oh, man, great to be here. Thanks for getting me on, my brother. No problem at all. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where are you coming from just now? Where- I'm from I'm South Carolina, uh, America. Um, it's kind of the southern area, kind of a state of two up from Florida and, and Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm in that area. Yeah. Well, I've never been there. And mm-hmm. some of our listeners may never have been there. There's, <laughs> there's a section of the podcast where we talk about travel. Um, yeah. So before we get into the music side mm-hmm. of your work, tell us a bit mm-hmm. about what South, Cal- what South Carolina like. What mm-hmm. could we look forward to if we decided to go over there for a trip? Well, South Carolina, in the area that I'm in, which is in the Charleston Tri County area, it's mainly known for uh, the seasonal temperatures. Normally, you know, we're not getting any snow. It does get hot, um, and it doesn't get extremely cold. If it does get extremely cold, it's more or less going to be everybody's going to be home. They're not used to the weather like that here. I'm from originally from New Jersey, where it has. Every season that you could imagine from tropical storms to hurricanes to hot to to really cold to a lot of snow, a lot of rain. But South Carolina kind of gives me the both of both worlds where I can kind of enjoy both of them without having to stoke because I don't like shoveling. Um, As far as culture is concerned, you know, we're we're known really for a bunch of different beaches. We're known for um, exquisite restaurants in the Charleston area. And for those who, um, um, Charleston Nine, those were the nine people that got, um, unfortunately, um, their life taken um, in the church. You know, okay. I'm from I'm from that area of Charleston. It's not normally a, a, a really bad town or a bad state or a bad city. It's really good. Everybody's nice. Everybody's got that Southern hospitality, a part of them. So um, everybody loves the restaurants. They have so many different restaurants where they'll have restaurant week. So uh, if we did decide to go to South Carolina, then what, what would we need to ask for? If we wanted something authentic or we wanted an authentic experience, what would you recommend? I, I recommend that you go downtown. There's so many different um, downtown Charleston is going to be where you want to go. Um, um, and that is going to give you any type of restaurant you, you can imagine from Mediterranean style to, to country cooking, um, to the finest from what I understand their crab cakes are, are great. I enjoy them all the time that I go down there. Um, I'm a seafood guy. Um, so I'm more or less going to go in that area for seafood and um so the shrimp and grits everybody raves about the shrimp and grits it is very good i'm not necessarily a shrimp and grit guy i'm either gonna give me either or a a shrimp to me is something else grits is more or less a a a breakfast food from from my culture but you know uh, downtown charleston if you get off the plane you ask the uber driver if you're hungry Drop me off at the airport. I mean, drop me off at my hotel, then take me downtown. And you have so many different restaurants that you can go to and choose from, um, from all type of eating likes. I love it. 
we still yeah. know what to ask for yeah. now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'll tell you what, let's start your music then. Um, so mm-hmm. I know you featured in a lot of publications and some live television, mm-hmm. if that's right. Yes. So mm-hmm. where where have you featured on or what's your appearance has been, firstly? Uh, my appearances have been on a countless amount of um, podcasts. Um, I have been on Kansas City TV um, in that area, Fox 43, and I have been on TV here in South Carolina, uh, the Myrtle Beach area. Um, and, you know, everybody does everything on video, which is great. I enjoy it because you can reach so many different audiences. So yeah. countless publications. Um, I was nominated for um, uh, uh, Independent Musical Artist Award, which is, from what I understand, a big to do. And so many different things is happening from just the level of positivity that I have. And um, I enjoy that. I think it speaks loud to what our world needs. Yeah. And um, I'm just on that vibe and I'll probably stay there more or less. That's great. So what were you, yeah. what were you doing on live television? Live television. I did an interview with them um, talking about you're a woman. And I did a live um, um, performance of the song you're a woman. I did, I was on that same um uh, news channel um, with the lovers all we need, and I was doing that whole vibe. And I, I was back there, and I, I was at a friend of mine, Roger Ortega, had a uh, a, a party, a 50th birthday party in um, RO50, where I was asked to perform there. So it was only right that I kind of um, been asked and kind of had a great time on the news channel, and then I kind of went to Roger's party and had a great time there. So we was there solely just to have a great time with Roger, and I just kind of got on with the with the TV station just to kind of promote You're a Woman and have a great time. We're all about good times on Mamwa. We yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, with that in mind, then, we'll come to those singles that you mentioned in just a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if we just go back in time very slightly, you your career mm-hmm. began, from what I can gather, in the early 90s. Yes. And you play multiple instruments, drums, keyboard, mm-hmm. organ, and bass guitar. Yes, sir. Some of us can only imagine being able to do <laughs> all of that. Um, but my question to you is this. How did you know that was a career path for you, music? It was just a passion of mine. I mean, I'm I'm more of a passionate guy. I'm, I love music so much, and it was just something that was a part of my life. I did enjoy sports. I played in high school. Um, I started as a freshman on the football team and um, I I loved music a lot more and I stopped football to do music. You know, it was something that I really, really enjoyed to do. Um, The passion behind it just comes from just a part of my spirit, a part of my essence. You know, I think most people sometimes have to go towards what what they love the most. And I think that is going to be um, the most success you have out of anything you do is you have to go towards things that you love and that in many cases that you would do if nobody was paying you any money. You know, that's the key. Um, and that, I believe, is going to be a lot more rewarding than anyone can give you financially. Of course, the money can come and will come. First, you have to find that passion and go towards that. That's going to kind of, you know, kind of put you in a mindset where you're comfortable and that you're having a great time doing it. Yeah. So we talk a lot about uh, intuition yes. and mm-hmm. like listening to your soul and your spirit as well mm-hmm. on the podcast mm-hmm. so not everyone knows how to do that you know not everyone mm-hmm. knows how to listen to that side of them so what mm-hmm. what advice would you give to those people who like if we just put music to the side for a second and say mm-hmm. they've got a passion they want to really go with it mm-hmm. how did you know that that was what your soul was telling you to do yeah, I wake up with it on my mind, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah, Music is a part of my psyche. Um, whatever that thing is that annoys you the most is more or less your passion. Um, music, I don't mean annoy in a wrong way, but whatever that thing is that you constantly have on your mind yeah, like is more or less... Or on you, on you, yeah, on you, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's on your shoulder... If you can't get it, if you can't beat the habit of whatever that thing is, more or less, that's your passion. Now, positively, I mean, people try to beat habits and it's crazy. But I'm talking about your passions and things yeah. that's going to bring light you know, into the world. We individually have an essence about us that is so spectacular, you know, so you, 
that you cannot deny undeniably. Every time somebody sees you, they see whatever that thing is. Whatever that thing is, more or less, that's going to be your passion and go towards that. Sometimes it's public speaking. Sometimes it's you have... Um, um, you love the gym and you and you love the nuances about it and seeing people grow and come from a level of uncomfortable health and, you know, pros- prospering in health or whether it's be cooking or whether it be public speaking, giving information. And through those things, you're developing and see more things that you enjoy and that you're passionate about that you can also benefit the world about. It's all making not you feel good all the time, but people that you come in contact with good. So if you're a good convers- conversationalist, Having a conversation could be your passion, could be something that you need to pursue and maybe do a podcast or, you know, develop public speaking. Mine is music. Mine is also, you know, conversating and, and developing a conversation that in many cases may be uncomfortable, that, but I can bring light to it and shed some light and positivity. And you've done a lot of connection through your music as well, which we'll get yeah. to. And I know it's part of that connection at one point was in the band Riff. Um, yes. And those guys were in. Let me just get this right. The film Lean On Me with Morgan Freeman. Were you in yes. the band at that time or was that? I, I was not. I am not an original member. I knew those guys. My late wife um, did go to the school at that time in the late 80s where um, she was a part of that whole situation. And um, um, I knew those guys. Most of us, you know, had connection. You know, the church community is really small. We we know each other through and by church and through and by different cousins and people that we know. And everybody knew Riff. I mean, Riff was just a part of what it was, not just from the movie Riff, but just because they were singers and they understood and they was a part of, you know, the quartet circuit, which is a gospel style of singing um, in the northern New Jersey area. So, um it it was just an easy thing. I was in music, they were in music, and we we knew each other, and um, you know our families knew each other, and it was just an organic thing that happened. So what um, what was your decision to come out of the band and go with your solo yeah. career then? <clears throat> my decision for came out of the, number one. My wife um, had gotten um, sick, okay, and I couldn't really give um, the group a hundred percent of me. I'm I'm a true believer, and if it's important. You know, when you're doing something, you got to give it all. You know, my wife was very important that I was there for her during her time. And it was important to me that I kind of take that step back from them and um, and focus on that. And uh, fortunately for me, um, as she transitioned, um, it was time for me. I think I thought at that time it was time for me to kind of move on and do some other things Um, to my advantage. I I produce. you know, I, I do a lot of things in the studio format, you know, you know, performing and putting stuff together and all that sort of stuff. That's a passion of mine. And I said, it's kind of time for me to kind of go off and do my own thing and um, and put the energy into that. And I think, you know, it was something that was beneficial to me. So we see the fruit of it and and how it's working out. And I'm just grateful for that, for the opportunity for them as I transition to something else that was personal and kind of on my heart to do. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. So mm-hmm. that obviously led to Love Is All We Need and You're a yes. Woman, which was released on International Women's Day. Perfect mm-hmm. timing. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make an assumption. You can correct yes. me if I'm wrong here, but I yes. I heard you say your your late wife. So right. um is that am I right in thinking your wife passed away? Yes, she did. So she I'm passed very away. sorry to hear that first. Yes. Um, Thank you. Thank so, you so much. I'm a, like, was that a big inspiration to these songs? Um, I'm inspired just by walking down the street. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I did write a um, song for her um, called My Wife, you know, before the um, Love Is All We Need. And okay. that was dedicated to her just to let her know how much I loved her. I didn't know that it would it would kind of trickle into her um transitioning but um it was just great for me to have to put that out and just kind of let her know you know my heart where my heart is Mm -hmm. or where my heart was you know during that during that season it was a great song it kind of focused on just her and just telling her she's beautiful and she's got that look and yeah you know my wife and it's significant when you can call somebody your wife a girlfriend is something okay i get it but when you take the time to consider someone your wife your life partner it's something special about that. And I thought at that time, and I think, and I still believe it, it was important for me to kind of get that to the world at that time. Yeah. 
That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the, my next question was, you do a lot of your own producing, mm-hmm. engineering, production. I can see you've got a studio behind you. So Yeah, it's not a green screen, it's real. You have <laughs> like a home studio. Do you have yes. other studios that you use as well? No, most times um, I, I'm comfortable here. If I'm asked to go somewhere else, of course, I can I can go anywhere. But most times, you know, I'm here and I'm I'm doing what what, what I do. If I'm asked to go somewhere else to do producing or, or creating or mixing, I'll, I'll go. But most times for me, more or less, I'm here. I have everything here that I would need to do anything. So most of my records, all of my records, actually mixed, mastered, created right here in, in this room. That's perfect. You don't even need to pay yeah. somebody else to use their stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, no. So like, if it's at home then, when are you most productive? Because I, I struggle to work from home. So that's that's a big thing yeah. to be able to just okay. get your head down. I, I, I am most productive. It doesn't matter. You know, I can just get out of bed and, you know, wash up and, and come and go and, and do it. You know, no one's here. Um, my kids are all away. You know, my daughter's in college. You know, my son is away. My daughter's away. You know, I'm here empty nesting as a widower. Um, as they were saying, I don't know how else to say that, but other than that, and every time I get inspired or whatever, most of the time, my muse, my comfort, my peace is in this room. My peace, my comfort is doing music. That's yeah. just something that's been a part of me forever. And now I get the opportunity to do it all the time. And I'm here most of the time. Excellent. And you're yeah. currently working on, I know you're released Rhythm in Love and you're doing a series mm-hmm. over the next year. So yep. how does how does this series come about? What was your like general idea that prompted that? Right off of your woman, I was kind of thinking maybe I should do a, a full length CD or or a record, and I kind of thought about it and I kind of pondered and just kind of looking at exactly what the industry and what's going on. Most times these days, and you got to kind of have a marketing mind. You kind of kind of have to see it w- without being an artist. You have to see it as a consumer. Yeah. So. As a consumer, more or less nowadays, people aren't putting out really long records. You know, most times they're going to put out an EP and that EP is that, you know, the songs are going to be from three to four minutes tops. And because it's so saturated with so many, you know, so much music. Yeah. So you got to be clear on how that works. For me, um, the record was done and I kind of just kind of said, okay, let's see what we're going to do. And I decided that I was going to put it out in volume. So instead of calling it an EP, I call it a volume. So if you're thinking about it as a marketing standpoint, you're you're taking a record, you're taking one record and you're splitting it up in two records. So instead of releasing one record, you can take that same record and put it in series or EPs and create two. That does a couple of things. One, it keeps you relevant. It keeps mm-hmm. your music out there. As opposed to you putting out one time, because more than likely that one time is going to be that one time. So when you continuously put out music over and over and over again, you stay in the public eye, you stay with something to talk about, um, you stay relevant, you stay in your audience's face so they can see you consistently putting out music. It's called work, it's called being busy, and it's just not putting out a, a record and just saying, oh, well, that's it. <laughs> no. So my whole year has been planned out since January, I knew exactly what was going on. So I met my deadlines. I know what's going to happen. Um, you know, when the record drops, drops July 10th. After that, I'm already working on my Christmas record stuff. Um, so I got Christmas record stuff coming out. Now, once the Christmas record burns, you got a good week for that to burn. You know, New Year's, they're not playing Christmas stuff. So you got to be figuring out what's going on for your Valentine's or whatever. So after the Valentine's over, that's one day. You'll have some songs that can kind of catch on and kind of move a little bit. Now you're thinking about what's coming up next. So you're always thinking or you're being forward thinkers. So you're thinking about what's coming next. And that so. takes a lot of planning. So kudos. <laughs> um, oh, you, so. Have, you haven't. You, you clearly understand. <laughs> yeah. And you have to hit them. Once you make those deadlines and you put that information out to the public, they're looking. They're yeah. looking. So you can't, you know, you can't say, oh, well, it's not coming. It's a problem. They'll never understand that. You know what I mean? You got to kind of be clear and you got to plan ahead and you got to drop some things. You yeah. got to do some things that you've never done. I always say you got to do some things that you've never done to kind of get some things that you never had. Yeah, so. exactly. And what's your, 
favorite thing about what you do then? Because there's a it's lot the, of, mm, of that planning and the, diff, the different albums, the different songs, different tracks, different marketing strategies. What's the yeah. favorite thing about all of it? The favorite thing about all of it is is the is the fans' response. Okay. You get I mean, we get to as creators, we get to create things that we enjoy for us. Um, and to have people that um see that you do it like that and they appreciate what you do. Yeah, you know, Rick Rubin said, and I say it all the time in our interviews, you know, sometimes you just gotta do it for you. And whoever enjoys it and likes it. That's the reward sometimes, but more or less the reward is you getting it out of your spirit so it can kind of bless somebody else. And more or less, you know, having the fans response and they liking a song or it's saying, wow, that's a really good song. It really resonated with me. That that means a whole lot. That yeah. means a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So, yeah, that's the f one side of the coin. What about the other side? What do you do when you're stuck working through all these different areas? What do you do when you get mm -hmm. stuck? Yeah, I don't push hard. Yeah. When I get stuck, I stop and I do something else. Okay. I stop. You know, most times, you know, when you're writing, when you're the sole person that does the writing, engineering, all that sort of stuff, you absolutely get stuck sometimes. And sometimes you just got to say, ah, okay, uh, it's enough. Move on to something else. And normally, when you move on to something else, you give it a night, give it a couple hours, you do something else. I love to play pool. Most of the time, if, if I'm just feeling stuck, you know, sometimes I just kind of you know, leave it on for a little bit and I come back to it. I go play pool and, you know, you know, go outside and run around and act stupid for a little bit. And then I come back and it, it, it pops just crazy. I take a ride or, um, and sometimes I can even just save that and move on to something else. Just relax your mind from that. Sometimes we can overdo it and we can over exercise that muscle on that particular thing. It will burn out. Um, sometimes you got to leave it and come back. Yeah. But when you're in yeah. that zone of, mm. I'm going to get done. What what's your motivator? What motivates you? Motivates me is to getting it done. Like yeah. I don't I don't want to I don't want to take no calls. I don't want to I don't want to do any of that. It's like when I'm in that zone, the phone is just like on mute and I'm going. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. and that, that's the motivation behind it is like once you get it and you understand what it is, it's it's go time. Yeah. It's, just, it's it's not a it's not a it's not a game at that point. <laughs> So you, you got a very clear vision of what you want that end product to mm. be, and mm -hmm. that's, that yep. stops you from stopping. Yep. Yeah, I, I enjoy the process of creativity, and I let it do what it's naturally going to do. If I force it, I, I say that's whack. It'll be corny to me. Um, so I I I, I, I kind of let it be and do what it's going to be. You know, I love the rawness <clears throat> sometimes of what the music give. Um, of course, the notes got to be right and everything's got to be on. But sometimes uh, 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 a little shaker on a certain part means a whole lot more on that particular part than anything. It's very, very small nuance that can make a difference in, this, in, the, in the piece. Very yeah. small. Yeah. Love it. In the, in the process to get you mm -hmm. or to where you are now then, what, what's been the most helpful thing piece of advice that someone else has given to you in all those years mm -hmm. stay true to yourself okay that as it, simple as that stay true to yourself i don't care who's doing what i don't care who is being profitable off of doing that if it's going to compromise who you are if it's going to be something that makes you look absolutely insane mm -mm. be true to you Whatever anybody else is doing, let them do that. I can't be, I can't be a, a I'm just using that. I, I, I can't be a Michael Jackson. <laughs> I got to be who, who I could, I got to be a Kenny J. I, I can't be, I can do Kenny J well. Yeah. Once I step outside of whoever and whoever else that is, I'm, I'm not walking in my purpose. That makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah. And yeah. there's probably a lot of people listening now as well mm -hmm. who, mm -hmm are being inspired by all these different areas that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If, if you could, let's say they want to get started and they're thinking, Oh, I'd love to do some music. And mm -hmm. that sounds really inspirational to get mm -hmm. your head down and put things into words or sounds, mm -hmm. or what would you say to them? Uh, 
uh, probably one of the first things I would say to them is make sure what you're saying, it resonates with you first. Um, make sure what you're saying that is, it's, it's something that's going to help. I'm an individual. I'm an artist that believe um, we are given gifts to bless the world. You know, once we take those gifts and we utilize it from, from in ways that's going to be degrading, that the purpose is not going to be exactly what you want it for, we move away from the true authentic reason why we are gifted to, to have these gifts. We have influence. People that are in the music industries have influence. Um, they have people that look up to them, just like athletes and people that are very famous. We have to be responsible with the gifts that we didn't even ask for. We cannot be out here um, being irresponsible with what we're given. So an individual that wants to get into this, please make sure that that is something that you authentically want to do to make change and to do it in a way that's going to help growth. If it's not, if you're in it to self-indulge yourself in things, yeah, it, it won't last but so long because it is not as easy as you think it is. It's just to, because you see somebody else, oh, I can do it like that. It's more or less not really that easy. It may look easy because they're graced to do it that way. And you have to find whatever that passion is for you. If it is music, you know, kudos to you. If it is that, stick with it and make sure that it's something that's going to help and not create more of a problem. We got enough problems around the world. We, we don't, they don't need any, any more uh, uh, problem starters. We need people that's going to help uh, uh, promote change and be positive and you know, create some differences that's going to help people. We really do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you touched on people in the industry. And yeah. I used to do, I spent about 15 years as a motivational speaker. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of young people in that time looking up to these big names in the world, not just in the music industry, and reacting accordingly. So mm -hmm. in the music industry specifically, mm -hmm. who's doing that well? And who's not doing it well? Who's creating a good uh, influence and who's creating a bad influence? Uh, I, I don't want to call any names, but I'm sure if you if you if you analyze or critique every artist that you come across, you could see who is creating differences, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. I think we could see. We shouldn't be. I'll say this: we shouldn't be motivated by the negative. Yeah. But because we get so much of the negative, we kind of morph into that thing that we see the most, right? Because we aren't seeing or we're not given uh, 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 positive affirmations in our music, more or less we'll morph into the thing that's not, that's not helping us, mm -hmm. all right? So... I don't know what it is. I, I always have this thing, and I don't ne necessarily like to dive too much into this, um, but you have to see it for what it's worth. You have to see that there is an element in our world that wants to see the chaos. And more or less, that chaos, I, 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 hate it. I hated this, I don't like this, but more or less the chaos supersedes the good. Yeah. And it's annoying to me. That's why I am so passionate about making sure that everything that I put out is is going to have a level of information. It's going to have some positivity. It's going to have some motivation, some empowerment, some ways that we could live life better. Love, I talk about it all the time. Love is something that if we don't understand, we act like we don't. Like love takes uh, is not love anymore <laughs> you know we're loving everything else yeah as opposed to loving just to have the ability to love it's like why do we love it Motiv love can't be motivated by what somebody could do for you love has to be motivated by just i just love it you just gotta love it i love positivity i love the energy that it gives i love i love the reward that it gives me back you know what i mean the industry is missing that in Probably one of the reasons why I continue to push it is because it's needed more than ever. And I feel just going on that mm -hmm. negativity is easier to feel than positivity. It mm -hmm. comes too much 
it comes too easy to us as a society. Yeah. Um, it takes work to feel good. It takes work to help someone. It takes work yeah. to mm. to provide positive help mm-hmm. to other people. Mm. That's, that's a, a shame. Weird, that's that's a shame. A, yeah, that's a shame, and that's a weird analogy, but it's very, very true. It's very. It takes work because there's so much going on, so many much negativity. Yeah. It takes work to be positive about yeah. it. That's crazy. It should be the opposite way around. It exactly. should be. Yeah. It should be the opposite way around. But because we are culturally in a world that pushes war, pushes negativity, pushes degradation, just pushing a bunch of different analogies that are like, oh my God. I mean, where are the positive? We spend the news spends more time on the negative things that are happen happening than the positive. Yeah. I'm not saying that it doesn't need to be spoken about, but it shouldn't have that much control over what's going on in the world. But unfortunately it does. It does. And just mm-hmm. on, on the back of that, I don't even think I've yeah. told my listeners this, but I haven't watched the news or read the yeah. news in 14 years for that reason. Wow. wow. For that reason. I can tell you one thing, it, the vibe is different. Like, like you can actually feel the happy and it's not infiltrating your mind. Yeah. I don't watch the news either, at, it, you know, for yeah. that, for but that I think it comes so naturally because you get in the car, the radio comes on. You put on the TV, mm-hmm. it's yep. t- 10 o'clock news, same time every night. It gives yep. people structure, but yeah. it's negative. Negative. So it's people negative love structure. structure. People love... The same time every day I know what I'm doing. The same time, uh-huh. the morning show or whatever, that's yeah. what happens at that time of the day. I mm-hmm. need that structure. I need that routine. Mm-hmm. But it's a bad mm-hmm. routine to listen to. Yeah, yeah dysfunction is contagious. Exactly. <laughs> but coming back contagious. full circle there, it yeah. comes back to music. We all mm-hmm. listen to music. Right. What, No matter what type of music it is, mm-hmm. but it's what comes from that music that right. feeds your brain. And feed your emotions. It does. Um, it does to me. So, if you could change one thing about the music industry, what do you think it would be then? Um, uh, the negative motives. Mm. Um, everybody is going to have a motive. I, I get it. The music business is a business. I get that. But the business of it shouldn't degrade, shouldn't be demoralizing, shouldn't have a motive that that preys on people it shouldn't have a motive that way music should be happy i'm not saying you shouldn't talk about or express it creatively with the negativity but have have an end have a conclusion mm-hmm. have something that's going to kind of bring light don't continuously push the negative and the dysfunction and leave it there yeah. with no with no end <laughs> it has Wrap to be up. End. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> What's the end all be all? What's the end? And 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 our music industry does it. If there was a way to kind of make it perfect, it would just just make sure that the motives have positivity attached to it. Yeah. Just just to make sure the music has. I'm I'm not. And I'll, I'll say this. Sometimes it's okay to be fun and having you know funny and it's it's okay. But don't let that kind of go way left. Like make it have make it make sense. Basically. Yeah. But then. Yeah. I, th- I guess I would ask the question. Some people who make music mm-hmm. are telling their story. Mm-hmm. And it just happens that their story is completely dark. Mm-hmm. So for people listening to that music, it's mm-hmm. on them to interpret it as mm-hmm. a story, right. not a fact. Mm-hmm. And how, how can, as a listeners, how can we take more responsibility for that? Yeah, it it it's understanding what that is mm-hmm. is very important, but the missing piece to that is there was an end. Yeah. What was the end? Don't leave people just high and dry without giving an end and just leave them off kind of making up their own conclusion. Yeah. Like it it's okay to have dysfunction to a degree to a degree. It's and but it's also better to work through the dysfunction and have a conclusion. Right, there has to be a conclusion. There has to be. You, you can't leave people. I, I won't give analogies because I don't. I don't like to talk about stuff like that. But it, it's but so much in our world that we we can look at. 
there has to be an end. What's the end? And the end, whether it's negative or whether it's negative or positive, it has to have an end. Don't leave people high and dry and just say, you know, back in the day in the early 90s, you know, in, in, in the late late or late 80s, there was a huge issue in our communities with, with, with narcotics, right? Huge. Who knows where it comes from? Okay, there's a bunch of different theories out there, but that era affected a whole generation, mm. right? So when, like, that generation, I was raised in that generation. I was brought up in that generation, okay? My fix to that was, okay, I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to forget where it, where it came, where I came from, but I have to say, okay, that happened then. I don't want to be in that headspace anymore. So many people was in the area, became the era, era, and they're still in the era, era. At some point, there has to be a switch to say, mm-hmm. okay, I can't be here anymore. Well, how, how come I'm, who knows, Asian? I still has to have the mentality like I did in the 80s. At some point, you have to change. Yeah. Or <laughs> you know like you I mean? say, at some point, you have to get out of the bubble. Absolutely. Like, observe. That's it. Like, become mm-hmm. an observer. Than a, yeah. a consumer, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, uh, everybody <laughs> has a perspective. Like at, at some point, you you can't grow up a certain way. Which I have grown up a certain way. I've been exposed to certain de- things about my dynamic coming up. At at a certain age, you have to mature. <clears throat> it's a choice to mature to say, "Well, I don't want to do that no more." That's that's old. I mean, at some point, you have to mature. Yeah, I'm not going to let that dysfunction create that normal for me in my head. You know, that normal isn't dysfunction. I've created that dysfunction in my head. I got to live better. I don't want to live like that. Yeah. That actually brings me to to my next Mm -hmm. question about myths. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that period has created myths about the music industry Mm -hmm. based on some genres. What Mm -hmm. what, for you, what are the biggest myths that you found in the music industry that you would squash? Um, I think the biggest myths to me is is um let's see one of the biggest myths i believe is the amount of control that i think the the music industry could have over you and it, it is a myth in context with this thought nobody can control you unless you want them to or unless you're motivated by something that you think they're going to give you most times in the music industry, the motive is or the control is money. They want to control you with the money. They want to control you with the money. If it is compromising who you are, you choose that based on whatever your experience is. Maybe you you know don't have it like most people, and you have to you think you have to compromise. You control that. A person controls that. You say that I don't want to do that and stick with what you think or you believe and let that be what, let your no be no and your yes be yes. It cannot be, I'm just going to compromise this one time to get this and that. Because once they, once they rule you in, they rule you in, you know. So I think the myth is, to me, is that level of control. They control it, maybe, but you also control you and what your decisions are. I think on that, some of these young artists don't know any better. Mm -hmm. And that's a big shame. Mm. And I think this is just my, uh, as an observer to the industry, this is where some of these conspiracies come from about Mm -hmm. Illuminati, for example. And I don't know, it's, it's a conspiracy for a reason. But if you can get artists young enough, they can be molded. Yeah, um, uh, that's true. I don't know. What's your take on this? These conspiracies, yeah. like the, the, the Illuminati, is I think the level of control. It, it's 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 a perspective that has a level of control and manipulation attached yeah, to yeah. it. So whether the theory of it is true or false, just the idea of it speaks clearly to control and manipulation. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the younger comes into the industry unlearned, motivated by what has already been out there, motivated by what they see, motivated by the Bentleys, motivated by the millions and millions of dollars, motivated by the women, motivated by the sex, motivated by the drugs. 
more or less if they're unlearned and don't know that those things have a you have a price to pay for those things. Yeah. If they don't know it, if they are um, if they are uh, you know unlearned about it, most times they're going to get sucked up. Yeah. Right. That older guys, <laughs> if they're manipulated to get into the industry, wow, we're, we're absolutely in trouble. But the younger guys, more or less, they get kind of sucked into that because of that Illuminati. Illuminati. <laughs> Illuminati is a perspective. Um, whether it's real or not, it does have a level of control and manipulation to it. So we see what the news is saying about certain artists, not saying any names. We understand what that is and how it looks. And we've known and had that perspective for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is not new to anybody. Unfortunately, now we see evidence, not just talk, not just conversation. We see evidence of what it was. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Just before we move on, on that, yeah. I've mm -hmm. always said, just as a generic comment, if anyone's comfortable yeah. in something long enough, they will always let down the guard. Always. Absolutely. And Absolutely. In any industry, any part of the world, any age, always comes clean. There there's we go. I've, nothing said, about I've that. said my piece. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's nothing about that that screams first time. No. Um, no. But that brings me actually really yeah. tidily to my next focal point of conversation, which is networks. Like if if mm -hmm. these people are young enough or vulnerable enough to be manipulated, it's they've fallen into their own network. Mm -hmm. So for you, what networks have helped you to benefit in your career in the music yeah. industry? These networks that I've been a part of, particularly probably one of the networks that I'm affiliated with now is Kick Up Your Heels. Um, that network network understands and loves R and B music, mm -hmm. the pureness of it. So their help, their push to get the music in areas, positive music in areas, is is a motivating factor all by itself, yeah. right? So it's not attached to anything other than just seeing what the potential is of the artist, seeing what their motivation is, seeing what their plan is and helping push them to where they believe they want to go, right? So um, probably one of the main reasons why I am kind of still doing, um, the, you know, and just having the passion about it is because I have people in the back of me that enjoy what I do and they push it and they have a plan. And sometimes what happens many times, if you're immature, if you do not have a plan, Nobody that's attached to you can make a plan that you're going to enjoy. You know, when you're partnering with people, the partner can't have a plan and you not have one, right? At that point, you're no longer a partner. They're leading and guiding you, Yeah. right? So it's important that an artist have a plan and uh, uh, the network have a plan and you merge those individuals and those things together so we can go do what we need to do. Of course, you have your people who will try to manipulate uh, the the scenarios and try to kind of put their spin on and know oh, this is happening or that's happening. But at the end of the day, we're going towards the plan. You you see what we're doing. You see how it's working out. And of course, nobody likes anything that's kind of rolling really fast and you can't jump on. And that's what happens most times. Um, I see in the industry so many different times people get agitated that you have people with plans and objectives and they're going after what they want and we're pushing the agenda of positivity, pushing the agenda with love. You, you're going to have your haters. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you that. But at the end of the day, as long as the partner, as long as the art, as long as the partnership is still steady, let's go on and do what we need to do. Well, from the sounds of it, you've got lots of plans because you talked about <laughs> yeah. everything you've got for the next year. Absolutely. Well, any of Absolutely. you listening... Get planned, put a get plan planned. together. Get planned. And then get planned. find your network. So where, yeah. do you, where do you find your network then? Do you use podcasts, networking events? What do you what do you attend? Yeah, it'll be anything in the world possible. If it's having lunch with somebody, if it's it, no, no lunch, as small as it may be, is insignificant. You never know where it can open every door. Um, look under every rock, talk to every person, 
communicate, be able to articulate what you're looking for, you will honestly be very surprised if you have something of value. Uh, if you have a product, you will be very, very surprised how many people will love what you do only if you just network and network with a motivation of trying to get that positive message out. You know, you know, if if you're going to have a negative uh, message, you're, you ain't going to you going to you ain't going to look far to find people that's going to perpetuate that. Yeah. <laughs> But just find things and find people that's going to help you push your positive message. And once you do, it, it, you know, the sky is still in it. Yeah. yeah. So overall then, mm -hmm. for the listeners who might want to get started, what's your strategy? We know you love mm -hmm. a plan. We know you know mm -hmm. how to plan. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's your strategy for success to keep moving? What would you advise people? Stay motivated. You know, stay looking at every piece of information that you can. If it doesn't resonate with you, don't hesitate to lay it down. If it does resonate with you, adopt it, make it something a part of you and go. Don't stop. Don't look to the right, to the left, behind you. Whoever doesn't like what you're doing, which you will find a whole lot more haters out here that, that's, that like what you're doing, but are mad that you're progressing a whole lot further than they are. Just still push and long as your motives are pure, you'll be successful. So the recipe is push. Push. That's all. Who whoever who doesn't ever like it, just push and and and, and do what you gotta do for you. And that's all I'm doing. Yep. I'm a hundred percent on board with that. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so Kenny, where can our listeners find your music and yep. find you on sites? Where shall yep, they go? You can you can go on Instagram at Kenny Wilkins. You can go on um, uh, Twitter. No, what am I talking about? Twitter, uh, TikTok at uh, TikTok at Kenny J. Kenny Wilkins, the number seven. You can go on Facebook at Kenny J. Wilkins. You can go on Facebook at Kenny J. And you can go on the website at KennyJMusic.com. Um, the record uh, is going to drop uh, July 10th on all your digital media. Uh, wherever you get your music from, you can pre-save on Spotify. You can pre-save on iTunes, and it's going to be something. We're going to go for a ride. We're going to have a great time with this one. Definitely is. And guys, Kenny has got a plan, at least for the next year. <laughs> so get over Absolutely. to his sites. Make Absolutely. sure you follow so that you never mm -hmm. miss the next year. Yeah. And Kenny, it's be good. I've really enjoyed spending time with you today. So thank you, All right, you too. so much. You I too. genuinely mean that. I'm motivated. I'm feeling yes. loved and I'm so Thank excited you. to just get networking myself now and get started in my own studio. So I can't wait. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Um, and for yeah. everyone listening, thank you guys for joining us for the last hour. It's been great to have you with us. And it's always a pleasure collectively to spend time together. So don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you don't miss any of these episodes as well. Um, follow us on Facebook at GordyCamp TV and at GordyCamp on Instagram and Threads. And until next time, look after yourselves, crank up that stereo, and keep on dancing. Take care. Salute.